I have I think this is where I say no Colin Farrell is doing an amazing job here. I'll say this right now, man. Um, this is the best makeup I've ever seen in any film. Guys, I'm a movie merchant. I've watched a heck of a lot of films. A heck of a lot of films. This is the best character makeup I've ever seen in any film or any piece of, of TV. See, the only thing that comes close was if you watched Darkest Hour, where your boy Gary Oldman played Winston. Um, in the in the darkest hour, this was really good, and I believe the guy who did his makeup was also the guy who did Gary Oldman's makeup for the Dracula film with Francis Ford Coppola, because he's like an Oscar-winning um, Japanese makeup artist. But whoever did this, bro, like every time I see this, I'm like, this is freaking incredible, and. So, so I had, I had like a dispute with my brother because when I watched the Batman, I was like, is this Colin Farrell's acting or is this the makeup that accentuates it? Like, I'll, I'll give you a good example. It's like when Pete, I'll give you two really good examples. So one example is Zoe Saldana in The Avatar, where people thought, oh, could she potentially be nominated for an Oscar based on her performance in the first Avatar film. Like the second one is a, is a, is a brick, the first film. And I, but I think people's argument was, no, a lot of it is the animators and it's really the animators that should really be given the dub. Another good example is, oh God, I've forgotten his name, Andy Serkis as, Andy Serkis as Gollum, Andy Serkis as Caesar in The Planet of the Apes. And the people's argument was, how much credit do you give Andy Serkis? How much credit do you give the animators? Because a lot of what makes Gollum work is his expressions and his movements, which a lot of it comes from the animators. Some of it comes from Andy Serkis, of course, the sounds, but a lot of it comes from the animators. Same thing with Caesar in Planet of the Apes, is can you really give the Oscar to Andy Serkis or do you give the Oscar to the animators? If anything, they have to share it. Yeah, you have to give an Oscar to the animators and also maybe an Oscar to Andy Serkis, but it's really hard to tell. So this, so this, so now, now this is a difference though, because there are no animators here. This is, obviously you've got the character makeup job, but really, it's really Colin Farrell. It's his voice, it's his movements, every, all of the physical stuff, it's all him. So this is very different from Gollum, Caesar, and Avatar. But when I watched the film, I was like, it's like, is this amazing just because of just your the amazing makeup that's been done? Or is it more so Colin Farrell's acting? So my brother was like, no, 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 Colin Farrell's amazing. And I was like, nah, yeah, he's good, but I think it's the makeup. <sighs> watching this series, so watching these two episodes, the makeup's still amazing. And the makeup definitely accelerates things. I have, I think this is where I say no, Colin Farrell is doing an amazing job here. And you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Heath Ledger and The Dark Knight. I still feel that if, let's say, it was just Heath Ledger's face, and they did to Heath Ledger's face what they did to Jack Nicholson's face, I don't think it would have come across as much. Because I think Heath Ledger was amazing. But what really helps is the makeup was really well done. And it was really, really good makeup in the way that they did the Joker's face, and Heath Ledger's acting just took it to the next plat plateau. But you have to give most of the credit to Heath Ledger in what he brought in terms of the voice, the movements, the intonations, how he delivered the lines, the cadence, everything. Similar to Colin Farrell here. It's his voice, it's his cadence, it's his accents, it's his movements, it's how he uses his eyes. And I think, like, obviously, the makeup accentuates it, but it's Colin Farrell's acting that just takes it to the next level. Because you want to have a bad example of this, go watch, and I've forgotten the name of the actor. It's a, it's a break actor. It's a, it's, it's, it's a film called Gucci. And basically, you know, it's a, I think it's called House of Gu Gucci. One of the um, accidents, I've, I don't even know, I don't even care what his name is. His performance, he literally sounds like Mario 
from Super Mario Bros. Hey, it's a me, it's a me, that me. I forgot the, 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 the name of the guy. Wait, hold on. Let me even remember the name of this guy, man, because we're hold up. House of Gucci, because he was in Blade Runner 2049, House of Gucci cast. Jared Le- Leto. Jared Leto in House of Gucci. Great makeup. The makeup was outstanding. He was garbage. He was a complete brick in there. So looking at this, no, no, no. I mean, it's, you see, the story is cool. It's a standard gangster. Hey, my gangster, do it for the family. We're doing it for the family. And you know, it's, it's, but it's nothing like, it's not Godfather here. Okay. It's not Goodfellas here. There's, there's, the, you, I, I can, I can already tell the things that are going to happen within the story. But the beauty of this series isn't necessarily the storyline or what you're getting from the plot. The real pull is this guy. It's the character. I think it's such an interesting character. The makeup is so well done. He looks so interesting where you can't take your eyes off him because when you're watching it, like just his scar, the um, mark on his nose, just what he looks like is what pulls you in. And I think that is why... Th- that is what makes this series work so well. Um, and it's like every time he's on screen, I'm like, this, this, this is such an interesting character. And I remember like when, like from the, the, the Batman film, and I'll, I'll get to the Batman. I was like, that's an interesting character. Now they made, because so remember, they wanted to do two series. The other series they wanted to do, which I think is stupid that they didn't go ahead, is Gotham PD which is pretty much finding out the stuff that's happening within the um, Gotham Police the Department and Jeffrey Wright, who plays Gordon, would be in the show. I was like, that is a great idea for, for the show. That is an absolutely great idea for the show. So I was like, wondering, like, wait, bro, why wouldn't she do that? It's insane. So little pop quiz here, which you guys may not know. So one of the, so Oz's, you say his girlfriend, you know, who works as like a sex work, an adult worker. His girlfriend is played by an actress called Carmen Ejogo, half Nigerian, half English. She used to be married to Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> so that's a little thing there. So she used, and I think they have like a kid or a few kids, but yeah, so, so her ex-husband was Jeffrey Wright, who of course played Gordon in the films. Maybe Jeffrey Wright was like, hey, you know, what up, what up, what up. That's a little bit of, of, of pop quiz. But see, my thing though is, I'll be real with you. You see, when I when I think of the Batman film, it's like a missed opportunity. Like, I t- I always go back to it because of the incredible cinematography. Like, I think it's Greg Fraser who was the cinematographer, and he was also the cinematographer for Dune. He was also the cinematographer for Dune One and Dune Two. The cinematography is outstanding. And just the visuals look freaking amazing. So that is what's all that's what's always pulled it to me. But I'll be real with you. The penguin is probably the most interesting thing about this. And I feel that one of the least interesting things was probably the Batman character. Like maybe they'll improve it in a sequel, but I just felt I was more interested in the world, more interested in the police the department, and more interested in the penguin, the, the character. Hence why it does not make sense why they didn't green light. The Gotham PD show because, but I believe that because the show is doing so well, and it's been received so well, I really do believe that they're going to do a Gotham PD show. Like it just makes so much sense. Specifically set in that world, rated 15, where you can get away with a lot more stuff. It makes so much more sense because I think the beauty of this show is, because again, spoiler alerts for people who obviously would have seen it. Like there's obviously that scene where he gets the the knife and basically cuts open. That guy, you could never see that in a Batman film. Because Batman, and and that is my, the unfortunate thing about Batman, where I do feel like there should be a Batman film that's rated 15 or, or 18. Because it's a gritty character in a gritty world. So if you're in a gritty world where there's so much corruption, it can't be a PG. It has to be at least a 15. Because you have to show the violent nature of a gritty world with corruption. So I like that how they're able to get away with it with a lot more blood and a lot more stuff. Um, in this. But I think, look, what is the, the most fascinating thing about this show? It's the character. It's a damn good performance by Colin Farrell. He won thousand percent is getting nominated for an Emmy and a Golden Globe because it's a bloody good performance and he really is carrying this show. Like, everyone else is pretty good, but 
he is so magnetic as a performer and just as a character. So Colin Farrell's acting, the, in my view, greatest piece of makeup I've ever seen, is what makes this show so damn good. And I can't wait for episode three.